this this is me back in 2008 2007 and me much more recently with my little my little baby guns <laughs> hi youtube welcome to talking out loud with Danae mercer today i want to talk to you about my history with disordered eating here we go when i was 13 we moved to nebraska and it was a huge life upheaval i remember i I went on my like first diet. I remember buying some fast shakes because I didn't know, but I just I suddenly thought, oh, my body is just all wrong. I was so embarrassed by my, my hips and my butt in particular, and honestly, my, my boobs as well. I developed very young um, into, a, into a woman, which does tend to be one of the triggers of eating disorders, is this kind of puberty or menopause stage where your body is going through transformation. I dieted off and on all through high school. I was always kind of aware of my food and controlling it or not comfortable with it. But things, things got really bad when I was at university. My mom, when we moved to Nebraska, within a month she started coughing up blood and it would be years of surgery and hospital visits and the summer between my freshman and sophomore year, my mom passed away. There was like a, a pill on the market that would help you flush out fat and I just, I was so unhappy with myself and with everything and I remember buying this pill and suddenly seeing all the fat that was in the food I was eating being flushed out and you could like you could see it it's so gross you can see it in the in the toilet as oil and of course now we know fat is actually very good for you but at the time I just I was horrified I was like oh my gosh this has fat this has fat this has fat of course as all this was happening with my mom and the death and the funeral and huge huge life upheavals food became a way that I could control things and that I was so good, I was very good at it. And so I started to cut out food that was fatty. And then it was around the time that Adkins was really popular. So then I cut out carbs and you know, you start cutting out like, okay, well bananas are unhealthy, which is insane to me now, but okay, bananas are unhealthy. So no bananas. Oh, but, but other fruit has sugar. Okay, maybe no fruit. Oh, but what about, uh, sweet potatoes, God no. You start to whittle down what's okay to eat until suddenly it's, all you can eat is steamed broccoli and air pop popcorn, you know, and, and Diet Coke. Basically, in, in the span of about three months, I lost almost half of my body weight. With eating disorders, you become very isolated because it's very secretive, it's very shameful, there's a huge taboo. So I started to separate from my friends. My friends started to pull away. They didn't know what to do. I mean, they could see me shrinking and getting sick, but we were 19 and 20. They, they didn't know what to do. Um, so they started to pull away. One of the harder things for me because, you know, suddenly I'm, I'm all alone and all this is happening with my family and I was just by myself. And so I just started restricting more and more. It was a very easy thing to focus on. So I used Tumblr at the time. There were all these blogs, tum tumbles, dedicated to people who were very, very thin, like pro Anna, which is in, again, insane. I remember I was, I was working multiple jobs on my, college, on my college campus. And I remember just sat for hours by myself like over Christmas break and it was so cold and it was dark and I was just I would just like look at these blogs and it was all a huge distraction to what was happening in my life and, and it was also very numbing you know when you're not eating or your body shuts down like your, your brain needs carbs to function so it it slows and what I remember the most about this time was feeling cold and also feeling very numb, like not feeling much, just just existing, which was horrible, horrible. My hair started to fall out in clumps, like actual clumps. Uh, it was painful to touch my head. I remember pain always, like in my back, in my body, everything hurt. I could never get warm. The hard thing about 
eating disorders is it's you know it's, it's so much about what's going on here and it's so hard to fix that especially in a society where being thin is celebrated you know when I was at my thinnest scouted at a mall for modeling um, the big agency I, I won't name them I get people all the time saying oh I wish I wish I looked like you, how do you eat so much and stay so thin? And of course the secret was I wasn't really eating that much um, at all. So what changed? I had a scholarship opportunity and I realized in a meeting for that scholarship that I was this close to losing everything I'd ever worked for because I was I was breaking, you know, like my professors sat me down and, and had a really honest conversation with me and I was ready at that point to change as well I, I think I didn't want to lose I didn't want to give up I'd worked so hard so I started the three-prong approach to I think healing and recovering and it's it's how eating disorders are, are typically handled because they're so complicated so you see a doctor regularly you see a nutritionist regularly and a counselor. And so it's, it's these three things. It's physical, it's food, and it's, it's hugely mental. And for about six months, I saw all of them, I think once a week, once or twice a week. And I'd go in and they'd talk about my food. Like we had to you know, plan what I would eat, which is ironic because eating disorders, you always are aware of what you're eating. But this was a very like, okay, you need to add this. Do you need to have this? The doctor was to make sure I was maintaining or putting on weight and that my vital signs were healthy because there was, I think I was about this close to having to go to a hospital. So it was very much like, you need to recover or we are putting you you know, into something. And the counselor is, in my mind, was the most important because she helped me process what was happening and why food was my answer. So I've learned to really prioritize mental health. You know, I exercise makes me feel strong and powerful and gives me a goal that's far greater and far beyond being the thinnest in the room. What I consume, body positive accounts, um, health accounts, media that again, doesn't trigger. Like, there's still to this day things I can't really go and look at, like Pinterest yoga girls because they are a body type that I'm not naturally and there's just something in that that it does something to my brain and so it's knowing okay no we don't do that we don't go there we stay away from that that is not healthy for me this is what I need this is what makes me feel good if you're struggling with disordered eating if you find yourself avoiding social events constantly counting calories, feeling stressed, and suddenly just skipping a day of eating, or binging and purging, or being obsessively healthy with what you eat. Oh my gosh, please get help. It can get better, and that better is always worth fighting for.